I'm back. Sorry. That's praise and worship. <laughs> Betsy Ortiz. Hello. Big sis. You doing all right? Good. And Brian Scott says it's empty because we are watching the football game. This is true. Church is empty because Brian Scott is watching the football game, which starts, is this, this, this is the season, right? Starts tomorrow? Monday? I'm sorry, sorry. Monday? Monday night football? I don't know. I don't know nothing about sports. Mm. Greetings, earthlings. <laughs> Bug, what's going on? Hey, I want to talk about this real quick if you can. Y'all already know the answer why the Saints ain't going to church no more. Okay, let's go back to the uh, beginning days of when we were forced by our parents, grandparents. We were forced. We were indoctrinated into this thing of going to church on a Sunday. No one, well, didn't know that uh, some folk was going on to church on Saturday. They were going to temple. They were going to, depending on your, what your denomination your belief was Saturday was church. Yes. And there were uh, some Catholics and some Seventh-day Adventists and some Jews, Hebrew Israelites. Saturday. Sunday was us. Well, somebody says uh, Constantine kind of changed that whole thing from because he was uh, the emperor of Rome and at the time and kind of changed some things. I really don't care if y'all go on Saturday. I don't care if you go on Sunday. I just believe that you should uh, worship somewhere, although um, I believe that you should always observe the Sabbath. I do not believe in my heart of hearts that God got rid of the Sabbath. I do not believe as a Christian, as a Pentecostal man, that God got rid of the Sabbath uh, because y'all say he got rid of all of the other laws in the Bible and the Old Testament. I do not believe it. So therefore, I believe that all men should worship God. Some men worship God in a building. Some men worship God in a church building. Some worship God in a house. They didn't have churches uh, in the, um, not church buildings. There was the church. The church is us, not a building. So they worshiped him in a house. They went to Mary's house or, who's, or somebody's house house okay and uh it was the man who was who was that locked up and um had a vision he was whole he was kind of sleeping and the angel woke him up and said get up get up out of there uh and the and the, the doors were open and the man was walking through the street and started knocking on the house while they were in there having church he started knocking on the door and the woman came to the door and, and she was like how you get out of jail you're supposed to be dead they're getting ready to kill you and she closed the door behind her and went back and told him, hey, guess who was outside? <laughs> yeah, it was a house. Okay, the saints of the first century church didn't put a lot of money. And they had all things in common. They didn't take all their money to put together to build a church building with that steeple on top, which is illegal. That steeple, y'all, that had some demonic little So if y'all got a steeple on top of your church, mm -hmm, uh, y'all go to the Sir Walter Jones show and I talk about that steeple on top of your church. You shouldn't be up there. Shouldn't be that. Mm -mm. Okay. So, uh, in walked uh, the Catholics and the others who decides we need to worship God in a, in a house made by man's hands. Even though he says, I don't have to dwell in that no more. Because I dwell in a man's heart. This is the temple of God. We present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable to God. It's our reasonable service. All these things that we hear in the spiritual because God says, I don't have to live in a dwell in a temple anymore. Okay, so we began to build houses so that we could, uh, church houses, so that we could uh, house the many people who come together under one pastor or, or an apostle or an evangelist, what have you, five-fold ministries operating, uh, a couple hundred people come together. Where are we going to put them? Under a tree? Where are we going to put them? In the yard where it's raining and snowing? Where are we going to put them? It's hot outside. They need some air conditioning. Where are we going to put them? It's cold outside. They need some heat. So we put them in the building. Y'all called the place a church. I don't think that that's what God's intention was for you to call the building a church. No. It's a house. We are the church. All right? Y'all call them the building a church. That's not God's intention. All right.
So I believe in coming together. I believe in not forsaking the assemblies of each other to, together. I believe in coming together. Although when the Apostle Paul said that, there was a lot of persecution going on in the time, and they were running, and and, God, and the Apostle Paul was encouraging them to come back together. Don't forsake the assembly as some were doing, and so that y'all will be strengthened, inspired, and hear the word of God. That's why he said y'all come together. All right? So we don't really have much persecution in America. Mm. That's another story. Betsy, you know, I got to change my glasses because I can't see what y'all writing. I just can't do it. Yeah, flower bug, the steeple, that steeple that goes up like that, that right there and on top of y'all's churches. Stop putting that on top of the churches because um, I did that study on the steeple and it ain't pretty. Um, I meant uh, I meant in that that God will understand. Yeah. What, did you say something above? Okay, you said because people are taking other things priority in this that God will understand. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, go ahead and worship on Saturday. That might be your Sabbath. Go ahead and worship on Wednesday. That might be your Sabbath. Because people can't decide whether Jesus died on a Friday or he died on a Wednesday. I'm sorry, a Sunday. Okay, I believe in my heart of heart it was probably a Wednesday or Thursday. But that's my. You ain't got to take what I had. I believe Christ died on a Wednesday or Thursday. That's just the way it is. Okay. All right. But we fight over all this unnecessary stuff. So, a brother Scott said, Paul said that. I thought the person who wrote Hebrew said that. Well, a brother, I said Paul because we keep fighting over who wrote the book of Hebrews. Uh, we don't know if Paul did it or not, so I'm going to ascribe it to him, that statement for now, and we'll fight in the inbox later. Okay, a brother, got it? <laughs> the Bible didn't say Paul said it, but we always say he did uh, because he wrote most of the New Testament other, other, other than the ones that we know who wrote it, and uh, we'll fight later on that, okay? Nevertheless, somebody said it, <laughs> and somebody who we love and uh, cherish, okay? Now, the people uh, were forced to come to the churches, and the choirs would march in at the beginning of the service. We had choirs back then, believe it or not. Y'all killed the choir off, and then we had a sound. The black church had a sound, you know? <laughs> sound that was then they came in oh, oh, oh. that was the sound all right the musicians was jamming and the choir marched in with the robes and what have you and uh they sang and they uh they didn't gyrate and do uh the the, the bump and the twist and all these new the dances that y'all young millenniums are doing in church no that was forbidden mm -mm, absolutely not and they clapped on time on the two and the four oh my lord and if they had a wig on well they tried to keep it on glue they glued it down but they made sure that Every now and then, Mother Show Show, her wig fell off, okay? And that was the sound that we had, and it marched in. And then um, the order of the service uh, was that uh, the choir did one song, uh, and then um, there was an announcement, and then the choir did another song, okay? And then there was no praise team. There was no praise dancers. There was no mime. There was no steppers team, okay? None of that. None of all that. No siree. There wasn't no CD players and all that stuff to play with, you know. There was a cassette player in the back, but they used a cassette player to record the sermon, all right? And so, after the announcement, then the woman gets up and then, uh, oh, cry is the answer, is the answer. We knew, here come the word of God. The word of God came forth. The man of God opened up the scriptures, told you to turn to it. You knew where to go. He had a real Bible. There was no iPad. There was no iPhone. There was no Android. None of that stuff. It was it was uh, paper. Okay? It was the King James. There was no other There was no other book allowed. We didn't, he didn't say turn to NIV. No, not in the black church. It was straight King James. And he read from that. And he took a topic. And then he spilt, he spoke, then he began to raise his voice, and before you knew it, okay, he tuned up, we call close, all right, and he closed, y'all went crazy, then before you know it, that 
that went on for another 15, 20 minutes, okay? And then he did an altar call, of course, and people came down to be saved, to be delivered. Uh, he passed out cloths, uh, passed out cloths, and he had the, the uh, blessed oil. Of course, it was extra virgin olive oil. And he poured it on you, and you dripped with it, and he or he did that to you, what have you, and then you he sent you on your way, okay? And then y'all dismissed. Sometimes the choir would do a dismissal song. the song that everybody stood up and says oh what a glorious day we had we were blessed all right and depending on your denomination and depending on your church depending on your pastor depending how big the church was depending how small the church was you got in there at 11 o'clock and you were out by 12 30 again depending on your area okay now in the south some pastors had several churches so they had to only do an hour and a half and they had to get to the next service you get that Okay, there was this was no mega churches that we know of. Many of our churches were small. They were storefront churches. The storefront church pretty much is. It used to be the candy store in the neighborhood. It used to be the store where you get some goods and services and flour and bread and what have you. And the store closed. It was vacant for a while. Some pastor said, "You know what? I'm gonna put my church in there. That's just right for my members. He ain't got but ten members." Okay, and then he bought the place. Well, he rented the place, and he went in there. Sometimes it had a it had. A, uh, hole here and the roof was messed up and roaches was in there. Trust me, that's where I come from. The roach house. It was a storefront. And we had some good old fashioned church in there. There was a hot belly stove there in the winter time. Okay? And that sucker was so hot that it just it just heated up the whole place. You had to keep the door open. If there was any windows in there, you raise the windows in the winter time. It's 20 below. But that hot belly stove, boy, ooh, blessed us. And there was a scrub board. Somebody had a tambourine, okay? And there was no full drums that y'all have today. No, not not 2,000 pieces of drum sets. No, it just it was just a snare. It was a, it was a foot. Uh, you had a hi-hat. You might have had a tom. And you had a symbol. That was all we could afford. And the guitars was going for. That was our church. That's the way it was. And, again, depending on your the area where you live, we were there all day. When we came up in, in the, the Jones house, we went to church at about uh, 1030. Okay, of course, we went to Sunday school at about 9. Sunday school went on from, from 9 to about 1030. Service, we had a little break, maybe 15, 20 minute, 30 minute break. We went to church. About 11 o'clock, and we was in church from 11 sometime to 2, 2.30. Okay? I don't know how we were able to get away with that. I don't know why they didn't, they didn't drug our parents to jail for um, neglect, child neglect and abuse. Because we, they, we, we was able to realize we, we didn't, they didn't feed us. Okay? They finally gave us something. The church was making some food in the back in the kitchen. Sometimes it cost some money. Most times it did, okay? Them chicken dinners, all right? They, they blessed us, though, okay? That chicken dinner had a spread of food, and they fed us, and that was our food for that entire day, all right? Now, we in church by 2.30, but guess what? We had to get back to YPWW, depending on your denomination, young people's willing workers, or um, the or the Bible, uh, the Baptist Union, what you call it, the, the BCU, I think it's called. It depends on your denomination. And you went back there about 6 o'clock, I think it was, and then from 6 o'clock until about 7 or 7.30, you went back into night service. And you was in night service in the Church of God in Christ from 7.30 all the way to sometime 10 o'clock at night, because they wanted to make it out of a revival. You got up and you testified and says there were two people stood there. And one says, okay, I'm going to test. They said, um, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for, uh, for my life. Thank you for being saved, sanctified, baptized, uh, filled with the Holy Ghost. That with a mighty burning fire. Pray that I be the one the Lord calling for in these last and evil days. Boom. And then she says, okay, testimony service is open. Uh, you give your testimony, sing your song, or testify. One or the other, and then you turn to the next woman, and, and then she says the exact same thing. They love being here, being saved, sanctified, baptized, filled with the presence of the Holy Ghost, that with a mighty burning fire, okay? Pray that be the one that he called the last and evil days, okay? Testimony service, and she in a real open testimony service. It's open to anybody who wants to testify. And then Sister Bobo get up and say, Travel shoe, Lord, battle on my fly vision. Travel 
Boom, she'll sing, she'll sing, and everybody just get all excited for a while. And then when she get through, she didn't understand the rules. It says you had to either sing or testify. You can't do them both. But she sang and she said, Saints, I got a testimony. Lord have mercy. I owe some rent. My rent was $500. And I was walking down the street and said, Lord, how am I going to pay this $500? And while I, as I was walking, looking down, praying, I had my eyes open. And there was a crisp $20 bill on the ground. Mm, hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. So I took that $20 and put it with whatever I didn't have. And uh, I almost had my rent. Cause so um, I hopefully by tomorrow, the Lord will raise the other uh, $480. Mm. I travel to life, not on my travel. Okay, sometimes you had those kind of testimonies. But people just didn't know how to testify. They didn't know how to edify the saint. They just testified about something that happened in 1935. Okay, oh, one day the man came into church and he had a, his arm was like this and the other arm like this. And as we were praying, that we, we saw that other arm growing just like that right before our eyes. Ah, Travis Hiller got on my That was 1935. It hadn't happened since. Okay, that's the church. But I'm used to, I was used to. Then we got in the car, we all drove home. Well, we rode home. We were young. We fell asleep. We were tired. We were exhausted. This was a school night. I don't know why the police didn't just bust in these churches and say, this is child neglect. How you had this man, these little boys, these little girls in church all day long? You fed them one time, okay? And now you keep them in church all day long, and they just, now you, they, they sleep. So Monday morning comes, you know what happened? We in math class like this. <laughs> Walter, huh? Huh? What's one plus one? Uh, six? Okay, because we were in church all day. Didn't make no sense. Okay, so that's what church was back in the time that I come up, all right? But it was a happy time. We got along with each other. Yeah, our parents had some, some um, secrets. Our pastors had secrets. We didn't know about them. They kept their mouths shut, okay? The only reason why we know that we got a half-brother over there and a half-sister over there and uh, the sister Bobo had a couple of abortions and what have you. The only reason why we know that because there was some nosy folk in the family, all right? Grandmama told this stuff, all right? Oh, my, your mama's sister told your auntie and your crazy uncle, you know, he, he told y'all some stuff when you got older. Guess what? That boy, that right there, that ain't your brother. Mm-mm, mm-mm. He belonged to Bobo over there because Bobo and your mama was in the basement during the service of 1949. Trust me, that's why we know. So our parents kept things quiet. On the down low, be quiet. Okay? So we were happy. We were getting saved and we tried to stay saved. We sure did. Oh my Lord. We were sanctified. We came. We I dressed like this when I went to, went to high school. Dressed like this. Had a shirt and tie. Went to high school for four years. Mm-hmm. Dressed like they said them brothers, them Jones brothers, they sanctified. Mm-hmm. No, but they, they that's that's what the outward appearance was on our suits and what have you. But I was kissing and uh doing some nasty stuff uh in the in the gymnasium with some girls. So you know, yeah, that that's between me and y'all. Okay, y'all not gonna tell my secrets, are you? That's the way church was. Okay, now, fast forward till today. We have uh, been inundated with social media, with 24-hour cable. To me, because back then, it was Channel 5, Channel, AB, well, for those of you who don't live in Chicago, it was NBC, ABC, um, CBS, okay? It was, it was um, uh, that UHF channel at the bottom and uh, that VHF at the, bo- at the top, okay? That's the way it was. And it was Channel 2, Channel 5, Channel 7. Channel 11 as a PBS station, all right? And then you had to go to the top and start changing that number. They, was, they, were, they were numbers that were, that were double numbers because you had to go to the other stations, all right? All right? That's how you got to uh, WTTW, not WTTW, I'm sorry, uh, Fox. There it was, yeah, all right? So, but our TVs, that's all we could watch. We wasn't inundated with this other stuff. And everything went off at a certain time. At 1030, you know, that, that was it. I mean, John Carson and then the, new, the news after... News first, then John Carson, and then the late, late show, and then boop, your TV went boop. That was it for us. Everybody had to go to bed. Snow White, there was nothing on TV. You had to turn it off. That's just the way it was. Okay, I talked about this in my sermons. I talked about how sometimes the uh, when the, the knob, the UHF or the VHF, it breaks off. So, what you had to do was you had to go and get some wire pliers, okay, and turn it. <laughs> That's how the, 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 the channel stands. 
Okay? Because them suckers just broke off your black and white TV. And the antennas, you know, they broke off too, so you wouldn't get a wire hanger. We talked about this in a sermon. Y'all, okay? You remember that? Okay? And so, sometimes you had to use your brother. He had to stand there. Okay? With, he had to hold it up while you sit there and watch, uh, Conjunction, Junction, what's your function? Da -da -da -da. Stay right there. Don't move, boy. Don't move, boy. Cause Junction Junction is on. Okay? And then, I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting in on Capitol Hill. Well, now it's off to the White House. And, um, okay? That's what we had to do. So, we finally understood. Lights out. Everybody had to go to bed. The night come when no man could work. We woke up and went to school, even though we were very sleepy. That was our lives in the 1960s and the 1970s, part of the 1980s. Because then in walked CNN, okay, BT, and uh, gosh, who else was on there? We had Friday Night Videos, okay, that came on. And then, then they started playing all of the hits of, the, of that era, okay, and MTV. And it was 24-hour cable TV, so now we didn't go to bed. All right, and then in the 1990s, the IBM came on the scene, began to make these computers and Apple and what have you. The TRS 80s, I had one of those. Y'all don't know about that TRS 80, okay? I don't know nothing about that. That's like 1985, okay? You don't know nothing about that, okay? So we watching this, and we it was MS DOS. Anybody know about MS DOS? It's before y'all had these mouses. There were no mouse. None of that. It was MS DOS. We were programmers. We had to type in every command. We had to type that in. C. Uh, colon, forward slash, type in what you want. That's the way it was. And you had to know. We all knew everybody's phone number. I knew 20 numbers of everybody in my family, okay? You knew everybody's phone number. There was no putting numbers in some type of uh, electronic device. We had a roller decks, okay? Well, you wrote the numbers in there, wrote them in, wrote them in, but then you, re you memorized them. There was no whole bunch of... Uh, area codes in Chicago was 312. That's all. You didn't have to dial 1773, 1847. Uh, what are, what other numbers we got in Chicago? Uh, 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 I really, uh, one seven, we don't even 312. I really, really type that in now because that was all they pushed that all downtown numbers. Okay, got on my nerves. So, right across the street, my neighbor. He lived right across the street, but I got it down. One, three, one, two, seven, 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 ninety, three, eleven. Okay? Right across the street. They make no sense. They was running out. Thank you, Demetri Pitts. 630-708-847-312. What happened? Okay? Because all y'all started getting phones. Because they came out with these things called an... Uh, a car phone at first, it was a big old thing, big box. It cost you three dollars just to make a phone call for 30 seconds. I remember them suckers, okay? Then they, then they finally be able to, they made a mobile, so now they came in this bag, big old bag, look like a look like your heart was in that bag, you know, <laughs> look like a doctor was on his way to <laughs> donate a kidney to somebody. That's how big that bag was in that big old phone. Then they came up with a brick phone, remember that, okay? And then they began to make the phone smaller and smaller. Everybody was able to afford them. All right, it was Ma Bell here, Illinois Bell, okay, right here in Chicago. That was our phone company. That's the only company we knew. Illinois Bell and People's Gas and ComEd, that's all we knew. Now everybody and their mama, they had to deregulate everything, okay? So we had all these cheap uh, mom and pop cell phone companies popping up, and now you just can't keep up with them. U.S. Cellular and, and, and Sprint and Nextel uh, and AT&T and... Ameritech, of course it was Ameritech, and then, in, in, oh, oh my God, and then uh, Verizon, and then uh, Aquan, and Pookie and them, and all them phone services, just everybody, so they had to give us all these area codes, okay? So, I'm set, I'm, I'm bringing y'all here to the church, I'm trying to bring it in. So, then we got 24-hour TV, then the, then the rating system began to, uh, the, the decency, be able to use four letter words. You couldn't even say ass on the on the TV without it being it, you could only say that after eleven o'clock. Even John and Carson didn't use those words. Now you can say ass, you can say B, okay? You can say uh, D as a D A M E M E N, okay. Uh you can say S H I T. You can say those stuff now on TV, regular doing prime time. Just amazing. 
So we got caught up in that. We're like, wow, this whole dignity, dignity, what they call it, the what, what's that organization that um, kind of police the language on your TV? What is it called? Y'all hit me out there. Yeah, so then we, uh, we got caught up in um, all this cable stuff, and then they came out with social media, the FTC. Thank you, Demetri Pitts. Okay, um, well, not necessarily FTC. Uh, it was before it was the FTC. It was uh, it was uh, what they call it the something rating, not the rating. They call it something where you they they actually censored. There it is. Thank you. Whew, that was bothering me. Censorship. Yeah, censorship. <clears throat> so, uh, so then they came out with the internet. Okay, yeah, FCC. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Federal communication, right? Federal communication or something. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <coughs> Internet came out. <coughs> and they came out with the... They invented this thing called a modem. The modem. Okay? And you you dial up. You, tr you plug into your phone and go... <coughs> you had to have a lot of patience then. Remember? You had to have a lot of patience because you sat there and waited. And, uh, and uh, it was, I remember it was CompuServe and Prodigy. It was those, those, those discs. You used to come to your house or remember you would go to the store and buy something and they come with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Melissa, I ain't forget about that Atari. I remember Pong. Boop. 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 That was excitement. Boop. All day long. Boop. That was, that was us, man. That was, that was, boop. Okay. So it was Prodigy. It was Copy serving it was American Online. Remember that, y'all? Okay, Chris Bates said Federal Commun Communications Commission. Thank you, Chris Bates. Uh, and uh, and then we put that thing in our computers. They were very slow. Okay, we had one gigabyte in our computers. If you had one gig in your computer, you had a lot of memory. We were like, there's no way I could never ever run out one gigabyte in. My oh my God! Matter of fact. Before it was one gigabyte, it was they. It was like two hundred meg megs, and then they went up to five hundred megabytes. You like, I got five hundred megabytes in my IBM. Y'all, y'all need to recognize. I paid fifteen hundred dollars for an IBM computer with five hundred megabytes in it. I was on top of the world, not realizing that only about four months from now, that same computer gonna be like eight hundred dollars, six hundred dollars. Okay, and it's gonna be. 800 megs, all right? Y'all use 800 megs right now just to watch a YouTube video. Come on! And so that's what it was back then. And you had to wait patiently. <laughs> then it said, welcome, you've got mail. You're like, oh my God, I got mail. Yes, somebody's thinking about me. And you go on there and you couldn't wait. And there it was, there's your mail sitting there. As usually from somebody from AOL says, hey, welcome to AOL. You're like, really, that's my mail? Really? Really? And then, you know, and there it was. And you're reading the mail, and so exciting. And But then it was kind of slow because somebody in the other room picked up the phone and said, uh, click, 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 click. They're dialing. And before you knew it, you lost your connection. You're like, Ma, Ma, I'm on, I'm on the Internet. What? I'm on the Internet. <laughs> and then you had to wait all over again, sign back on it. <laughs> Boop. Welcome. You've got mail. You're like, Ma, don't get on the phone for about 30 more minutes. Okay? That's the way it was. And then you go in there and uh, typing in stuff. There was no video. You didn't have enough room. You didn't have enough memory to watch videos. So everything was text. Okay? So you had to put in your your CD, your DVD player. I mean, your, your well, it was a CD. And those computers came with that three and a half disk drive in that big old five inch floppy it was a floppy disk it was you can bend it and you can <laughs> okay remember those floppy disks it was huge five and a half inch i think it was five five okay you put that in there and then you close the door all right it had a shutter on it and then you could hear it reading it like a record player you hear it read remember those and then they had the, the, the three and a half those are all oh, man they, those were hard man those those things right there they were fast and on point Okay, because we had VHS, and then we had Betamax. Betamax was the highest quality. You get about two hours, but you're going to get some high quality. VHS was six hours long. Ooh, wasn't the greatest quality, but, man, you're going to get six hours of good programming. Okay? That's the way the computers was. 
All right, they came up with 300 and 300 baud rate uh, that card that you can put in your computer. Then they went up to 1200 baud rate. Okay, then it took you up to 2000 baud rate, 3000 baud. Then it went to 54k. Wow, 54k. That is a lot of fast download uh, connection to your phone speed. 54k. <laughs> Boom! You've got mail. Woohoo! I got mail. I got on. It only took me four minutes to get online. <laughs> Fifty-four K was the bomb. All right. And uh, then they offered us one gigabyte. We're like one gigabyte. There is no way on earth and in heaven I will ever use up one gigabyte. That can never happen. All right. Then they came out with these flat screens, and we was we was in the money then. Flat screen TVs, black. I mean, uh, color. Woo! That bit rate was just bad. You know what I'm saying? So then in walked um, Google, and then when YouTube came on scene, Google bought YouTube, and now they all got the same search engine. And we had Yahoo, Yahoo, okay. And then we had uh, InfoSeek and all these search engines that you couldn't name, uh, Excite.com, and gosh, yeah, yeah, I'm telling my age. Oh, we had all these these search engines. All right. And then in walked MySpace. Oh, MySpace. MySpace was a place where everybody just hung out. MySpace, that's my place to go. And the church was like, y'all stay away from this stuff. The church did the same thing with MySpace as they did with the TV. They said, that's the boo box. Don't nobody need to be watching that thing. It's the devil's box. And you're going to get swapped up in that thing. Okay? Don't watch the boo box. And it hurt some of the people because before you knew it, that boo box became the ministry for many of you. Apostle, uh... <laughs> uh, <coughs> <RDN. coughs> and uh, Reverend Schombach and gosh, A.R. A. Allen and all these people made made uh, their ministry shine through that boo box, okay? Because all they all they were looking for, looking it was the, it was radio. That's that's what well, your broadcast was on. But when you got on the what's called access t uh, cable TV access. Oh my goodness! And a lot of it was free of charge. That was that was the greatest invention yet. MySpace came on scene. And everybody was adding everybody in MySpace. And the church said, that's the devil. Don't y'all go on there. And before you knew it, the Church of God in Christ had a MySpace page. That's what they told you all it was the devil. But then when they realized it was the money that could be made and some, some uh, connection that could be made and all this stuff. And they said, okay. So the Church of God in Christ came on MySpace. Then all you old folk realized that your young people was, was on this thing called Facebook. What? A book of a face? Face what? What's that all about? Uh, don't worry about it. The kids, that was their only private party. And y'all like, nope, I'm going to bust this party up. So y'all start signing on Facebook in 2007. Y'all just start signing in 2008. More y'all jumped on, even I jumped on 2008. And my kids were like, well, <laughs> got to go. Feet don't fail me now. Dad is on Facebook. Shoot. They gone. They went over there to the other places where you can only get a video for about three seconds. They went over there to them people. Okay, them, them Instas, Grams, and all those other people, and then them Twitter cats. Okay, so all the old people went on Facebook. That's where y'all all hanging out right now. My mama and grandma are on Facebook, so I knew I should have left a long time ago. Okay, there we are. Facebook inundated with all these posts. See, my mama just joined right there, Evelyn Jones. Lord, I done spoke up the angel. Okay, and there it was. So now. <sighs> I went all the way around the corner and back again. It took me 35 minutes to get to why is it that the churches are empty today? It's because we are distracted. Back then, it was a simple time in the 60s and the 70s, okay? It was a simple now, We left our bicycles out on the front lawn and went to bed and woke up the next morning and, and the bicycle was still out there. In the 70s, on the west side of Chicago. Not now. I dare you do that. You can't even do that now in the uppity areas the more upscale areas now because the, the, the thugs are going into those areas because y'all keep leaving your doors unlocked. You keep leaving the keys in the cars. And every time I turn on the news, I'm hearing about the, the upscale, these white areas where you got to make at least $500,000 a year in order to live over there. Now they're getting all scared and nervous. They're like, oh, my God, someone broke in my car. Matter of fact, my car ain't even there because you think you live in a utopia world. Why would you leave your key in the car and go to bed and then leave it all doors unlocked because you live in a nice area thinking that the enemy can't come in? The Bible says while the while y'all was asleep, 
the enemy so tears among the weak. So you got to always be vigilant. Be on, be, be aware, okay? All right, that's the way it was. So you guys are having church too long. Y'all holding church too long. You said, but Brother Jones, they held church a long time in the 70s. Well, it's a different time now. Let me tell you what happened in, in, um, in media. Remember times back then when we would hear a song, we would open up, our, we would turn on the TVs and we'd be here. Okay, we were here at Archie, all right? And guess what? They played the entire thing. sat there and watched the whole thing. And they didn't just do that with that. They did that with this. this uh, let me see. What, is it? what else I got? Oh, uh, I'm trying to tell you the other song. Oh, what's this? Just looking out on the window they played the whole song. Whole song. Okay? Whole song. Uh. sat there and sometimes the song was one minute to one minute and a half. Okay? Why? Because the people of that time were very patient and they knew it. They knew that a person would sit back with a cup of coffee or some tea or whatever their beverage or drink uh, or, or popcorn or what have you and they sat and watched. Matter of fact, in the movies of the 1950s, if y'all ever go back and watch the original um, um, Ten Commandments with Charleston Heston, uh, you would go, they went to the movies and they they had what was called an overture at the very beginning of the movie. Okay? Overture. And the overture lasted for several minutes before the movie started. Before It was a real live orchestra. A band sitting there in the movie theater and they were playing the, that... that, that. <laughs> That was it. And then the movie came on. And guess what? The movie had what's called an intermission. I'm not talking about a stage play. I'm talking about the movie theater where you sat there and had popcorn. Because they knew those people were very patient. They wasn't in a hurry like we are in rush to do everything. That's the way it was. An intermission. And that movie lasted for about four or five hours. Go watch, uh, see the movie called Going with the Wind. Same way. Over, or the overture at the beginning. <laughs> might be dynasty. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Nas Landing or somebody. Okay? That's the way it was. They had an intermission. Okay? You had to go get some popcorn, take your time, and then the lights went off and on. They flipped the lights. That was the movie theater. So, TV was the same way in the 1960s and 70s. They played an entire theme, and then they went to the situation, and then they went to commercials a few times, and then they played the... Uh, You sat there and you waited. 
Then what happened was the producers of these movies, the movie producers and the um, the TV producers, NBC, CBS, and all of these, the Columbia and all these guys, they realized that we're not as patient as our fathers were. This is not your father's Oldsmobile. So what happened was um, they began to stop playing the entire theme song at the beginning. That's why what they started doing was they wouldn't even give you the theme song at the beginning. What they did was they said they'll say... Um, they'll say the, the Cosby Show at seven o'clock, and then boom, in walk the Cosby Show. No theme song. Somebody saying something. They go into their little situation. Hey, honey. Hey, baby. And where's the kids? Yada yada yada. And then somebody says something funny, and then boom. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Oh, you see what I'm saying? They never used to do that. They went right to the situation because they realized y'all don't have no time. Y'all don't sit by and be patient enough to wait and see. I sat here as a writer, put my best work in, but but y'all don't even have time to wait. Okay? Then what they would do is uh, they started coming up with shows like Seinfeld. And you know what Seinfeld? You know what they did? I don't have a, I don't have that sound here on this computer. But this was Seinfeld. <laughs> That's it. That's the whole theme song. And then right into it. Buck, 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 buck. Boom. Situation. Because the people don't have time for no long, drawn out theme song. We're not patient today. And so, that's why you see these, uh, then these cop shows, these investigative report shows or what have you, they did a, they did a documentary on why the, they, those people talk so fast. They sure did. If you watch the, the latest, in fact, let me see if I can find. Can y'all name some uh, uh, some cop shows today? Maybe it's the no, some investigative report shows today. Okay, well these these cop shows, Law and Order. Um, these are some of the stuff that popped up on uh, uh, CSI Crime Scene Investigation. Of course, Law and Order got a whole bunch of them. You know, Miami Vice back in the day. Um, gosh, you know, even Hawaii Five O and um, Rockford Files, Starsky and Hutz, they all play full theme songs, but not NCIS and not all these other ones. The Closer, okay, watch these, okay? Uh, CSI New York, the the Mentalist. When you watch these shows, you cold case, okay. Pay close attention to them when they come on. CSI Cyber, <clears throat> New York Undercover. When you watch them, watch how they talk. It's real fast. And I said, why do they talk like that? T.J. Hooker, Murder in the First, Xavier the Inky, Criminal Minds, okay? They talk really fast. And, I'm, and I often wonder, why are they going like this, like that? <clears throat> and then they go to something else, they go in the room, and everybody's talking like blah, 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 blah. Because you know why? Because the advertisers need their time. Monk, Melissa, was one of my favorites. The advertisers wanted their time. They're paying for this show. Okay? So they figured the writers in cahoots with the advertisers. For instance, y'all often wonder <clears throat> why in, like, in Chicago, they tear up your street. Okay? The construction company come and tear up your street. And then they come back. May maybe months later, like in my era, and they repay, they pave the street, they pave it, they fix it, they're gone. And guess what? <clears throat> Next summer, or maybe sometime sooner than that, they come back and tear up your street. He said they just fixed this thing. I mean, they 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 busted it up and put new concrete down, and then they come back and redid. Because some people feel that they're in the cahoots. They got to keep the people working. So they go back and, and tear up and then use an excuse like, we got to put another pipe over here and lie. <laughs> so what happened was the, the, they said that the people, the writers began to tell the, the actors, talk fast because we got to get to a commercial as fast as we can, get as many commercials in. Number two, the people don't have time to sit around and wait. I'm a preacher. It's taken me a long time to get to the point, isn't it? So church is a place where people are not patient anymore. So you can't be thinking like, like your grandmama and granddaddy did when he had the church. This, the church is not your father's Oldsmobile. 
You cannot be having three and four hour services anymore. You can't do it. The people are impatient. And matter of fact, people, their patience lasts about eight minutes is what I saw in the a, in a news the other day. Their patience is about eight minutes. So if you've got a 30-minute sermon prepared and you got point A, point B, point C, five point, ten point bulletins and all this stuff, you're gonna lose them in the first eight to ten minutes. They gone. Except you really bring some stuff that makes them really think. You gotta bring in to the you gotta bring in some sensationalism. Okay, because people don't want to hear no simple sermons. That's why the preacher try to get ready to close. He tune up because he know, oh, okay, now. Now the man is preaching because he he did this. And then they say, now he preaches. But if he talk like I'm doing right now, many of you who are church minded will say, he ain't preach. He ain't do nothing but talk. But what I just did here in the how many minutes of it? In the 47 minutes, I just I just taught one of my best sermons ever. <laughs> but if I do this. I preach now. No, he's moaning. He's closing because he ran out of things to say and he know that in your culture, this is what he has to feed you in order for you to start listening now. Okay? But what you should have listened to is the first half hour. <laughs> but you don't have the patience. So, people are entering your churches because y'all hold church too long. Y'all holding people captive and the police need to come in there and bust up. Not the police. Actually, it's the fire department. People are hungry, so yeah, DCFS need to come up in there because y'all holding these kids hostage. You holding the adults hostage, and then when you're trying to collect an offering, you tell the ushers to lock the door. That is against the law. What are y'all doing in America? You can't do that. You can't hold hostages in the church because you're trying to force them to give an offering in the pan. God ain't going to receive none of that money. I was at a place with a church where the pastor told the choir, I want the whole choir to march around to the offering plate. I need to see you march around, okay? And I'm looking at the brother, I'm like, how how he going to force us to please God? How he going to force us to give money? Cause he, because he the, because the lights... The, the, uh, the light bill is high, and y'all are raising enough money, so you're going to force the choir around there to give money in there, thinking that that's going to work, but God ain't going to receive none of that because you're giving grudgingly. Okay, you're giving because you're forced to, or he put fear in you that you had to give. God ain't receiving most of y'all's offerings because you're scaring the people to give, and the people ain't giving from their heart. Then you wonder why the people ain't blessed in in uh, in the in the in, the, in their houses. They they're not blessed blessed in the marketplace. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast. No, you're not. You're not blessed because they're scaring y'all to give. So people ain't coming because I ain't got no money this week. So tomorrow is Sunday. So because I ain't got no money. I'm going to go to church. Maybe I'm going to go to church when I think that offering is done. So y'all won't be bothering by giving. But unfortunately, offering is never done in our churches. You know why? Because when we walk in there, there's a benevolent office, off, offering right away. Right away. You walk in there, benevolent offering, number one. Okay? And then so you might miss that offering, but you're going to sit there and you get there after the benevolent offering. Well, the choir is going to sing, and then they might be a sermonic solo. <clears throat> Depending on how your off your church is, some some people raise offerings before the pastor preach. That's the way it used to be. Not no more. Okay, so now you got to give them a general offering. Okay, then some churches have a third offering. That's the tithe. The tithe is a separate offering. Y'all like who do that? Who do that? I'm not, I ain't saying no names. I'm just telling you, I've been in this game uh, for forty. Well, I'm fifty now. But I've been in the game, I say, for about 37 years, okay? There's a benevolent offering. There is a, a, a tithe offering separately, tithe, by itself, all right? Then there's a general offering after the speaker, okay? And then there's a fourth offering. You know what that fourth offering is? The fourth offering is the monies that we uh, need to raise to reach the $5,000 we need to raise every week. We didn't reach that in the three offering. And this first offering don't count because that goes to the benevolent. That's the people who need it, the poor, uh, the widows and the orphans and the strangers, as the Bible says, uh, and those in your churches who just can't pay their rent and the lights got shut off. That's what that offering, okay? Sometimes that offering right there gets mixed in with the general offering, uh, which if somebody, if uh, if the government come down and up in there because, you know, y'all are sharing 
they gave y'all a 501c3, so the government really got their hands in y'all's churches. Mm -hmm. Everybody trying to get that 501c3, you don't realize the government got you. All right, so that benevolent, they look in your books and you realize, they didn't realize that that benevolent is being mixed in with the general offering and then going to ComEd. Y'all can get in trouble for that because that's supposed to be allocated. That's misappropriation of funds. That's supposed to go to the poor. And then you said it's going to the poor and you gave it, you put it in the general offering and God's going to get you for that because it never goes to the poor in some of your cases. Yes, I said that. I've been in this game a long time. So that's the first thought. Second one is the, is the tithe. Next one is the general offering. The fourth one is you got a guest speaker there and you need to raise another offering for him. I know how the black church works. I've been blackity, blickety black all my life. That's how it works. <clears throat> okay? Shackled to the government, Tim Harris says. I know. So the person who ain't got no money don't come to your church because he's afraid or she's afraid that you're going to rob them dry by taking by making them feel bad if they don't give. You make the tithe payers stand. Now I'm getting righteously indignant. Calm me down. Y'all make the tithe payers stand up in a line, and you make the ones who didn't don't have a tithe to give, you make them feel bad. You make them feel horrible. You send them to hell. You tell them they're being cursed with the curse. You make them feel bad, okay? And the person who got their tithe this week, they so proud, they so godly proud, they got their offer, and they standing so high, they raise it so high, Woo! they say amen the loudest that week that they got their tithe. Next week, they are, they're not paying any tithe, so they like in the cuff. They like this. Ooh, Lord. Sometimes they stand up anyway they, they, because they say, oh, I paid mine last week, but I need, to, I need to show that I do faithfully pay my tithe. And then there's that 20% in y'all churches who don't pay a tithe. They, if they can't afford to pay a tithe, then y'all give them this line. Well, you, cannot, you can't afford not to pay a tithe. So then you make them feel bad. And guess what? One by one by one, they stay home. Or they only come after all that money stuff is over. And before you know it, they out of there. So the people come to church and they get bullied by because they don't they're not able to give the money to whatever. They get bullied because they, they the ushers bullied them, made them feel horrible. The ushers got this look on their face. They like, go sit down, Arr, take that gum out your mouth, Arr, get off your phone, Arr, stop passing notes. Arr, I told you to sit right there. Arr, okay, and now they're like, I, where am I? Is this the police office? What what is what is this? Okay, and so so then. If they can get past the mean usher, then they got to sit there, and then then he he gets browbeated by the, the the pastor who's ever up there. The praise and worshiper beats you up because it's get on your feet. I said get on your feet. You look at praise the Lord. You don't. Why are you sitting down, young man? Back there, young man. What's your name? Walter. Walk. Get up. God been good to you. Get on your get on your black feet. Now praise the Lord. Come on. I said, clap your hand. So we sit there like, ah! <laughs> we scared. We don't want to come to your church because the praise and worship, but he, he, he made me scared. Mufasa. Okay. So he beat me up. But when he got through, this is what I used to see in these praise and worshipers. When they get through beating you up, they sit down and they don't, you don't hear from them after that. Matter of fact, when I was part of a band where when he got through beating y'all up, <clears throat> The praise and worshiper, what he did was, when it came time for the word, you know, you found him not in the sanctuary. No, not one. That fool was found somewhere outside. He was either sitting out there on his phone, on Facebook or something like that. He in the back, in the kitchen area, you know, flirting with somebody with the kitchen staff. <clears throat> He's somewhere. He in the car listening to WGCI. Oh, he, he ain't in the sanctuary. And if he in there, he ain't paying attention to what's going on. Now, he get mad at y'all. He beat y'all up because you didn't get with him. Okay? And then when the word comes forth, he, he ain't involved. And it's like some of the pastors, some of the preachers, some of the guest speakers come there. The pastor make him sit in the office. Why y'all out there praising the Lord? He don't want to be a part of y'all. Now, what kind of, what, what is this organization? So, the people ain't coming to y'all's church because they're tired of this wild and out. It, it, you talking about girls going wild? The church done gone wild. Y'all yeah, done gone wild. So then, <clears throat> y'all decide to implement praise and worship. Not praise and worship, but the praise dancers, okay? So what you do is, everybody in their mama want to be a praise dancer, and you say, okay, no problem. No vet. You didn't pray. You didn't take them through a, a, <clears throat> a um, process of um, finding out if they even saved. <laughs> 
So you say, we're going to praise dance this week. And then these chicks walking there with the Leo Todd's, okay? And they really, they taught Leo Todd it, okay? And uh, the Lord blessed them because they got boobs, all right? These little 14, 15-year-old go girls, okay? The Lord blessed them. They, they're they coming into their own early in life. Well, praise God. Cover up. Hope, tell your mama, teach your daddy, tell them, y'all, instruct them to take kids. Okay, you're 14, but you look like you're 21. That's why these preachers are going to jail because they, they're thinking, these girls are saying, <laughs> I'm 19. Mm -hmm. You are? Well, can me, girl, coming to my house. And these preachers now, you can, you see them on Facebook and you see them on Google with this picture. That's his mugshot. Because <laughs> he done molested the girl. She's 14. He said, she told me she was 19. Well, fool, why are you even sleeping with the girl? You married. I, who cares what, how old she told you you were? Why are you you the pastor? And how does a shepherd sleep with the sheep? That is, um, that is a that is, that's against nature. You don't sleep with animals. The sheep, the shepherd don't sleep with sheep. <laughs> what y'all call that when you when you sleep with an animal? Come on, somebody somebody post that. What do you call it when a man sleep with an animal? Can y'all put that in? It's in the Bible. Y'all help me out. Come on, tell me. Uh -huh. So y'all out of control. All right, so then these girls get up there and start dancing, and then they ain't got no bra on. It's bestiology. Be bestiology. Bestiality, I think it's called. Okay, breasts. They look like they just, they joining, they in a wet t-shirt contest. And then they, they dancing with the breast. Okay, poking out. You see the nipples. I know. I'm in, a, I'm in a teaching mode today, y'all. I'm sorry, but I got to go here. And then they bend down, and you can see the camel toe. I said it, De Deatrice. Deatrice, I said it. You can see the camel toe. You're not supposed to see the camel toe unless you're down there in Israel somewhere where it's in the desert area, and you need some water, and you're trying to get on this thing called it. That's the only time you're supposed to see a camel toe. But y'all see the camel toe because the, the, the girls are bending over. Now, not only do I see the camel, but I also see the, both the full moon and the half moons. And I'm like, really? Is this what the praise and worship has turned into? Me seeing the sheerness of your clothing, which, which shapes your body? Okay, all kinds of sizes. I think you need to examine even the size of the women who are up there dancing because we can't focus on the worship because we're looking at your size. So the people ain't coming to church because they're like, I got to come here and clothe. And the deacons got their heads down. They up there with the whole, doing the whole tans. They got their head down. They're like, Lord Jesus. Now my wife saw me on the internet. I was on Pornhub just two weeks ago and I told her I'll never go on there again. And she was all in my <laughs> all in my phone the other night. Now I got to look up and see this chick with the camel toe and the nipples with a wet t-shirt hanging and all this stuff. Now I can't look up and enjoy the worship because this woman here, my wife looking at me, look at this woman. That's the way our churches have turned into. Now I can't enjoy worship. I got to wait till this is over. So I got beat up by the praise and worship team. They beat me up. I mean, I'm bleeding profusely because he told me because I didn't clap on the two on the four, I'm going to hell. Now I got to say amen loud because you said, then y'all got this thing by clap your hand like you never clapped your hand or scream like you never have before before the Lord. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to fall into that. Now you're going to make me guilty. Now I got to scream real loud to find out. All of the, I'm 50 years old, so for, I'm going to go back 49 years to see when's the loudest I've ever screamed for the Lord. Because this man told me, I got to scream like I never have before the Lord. Now I got to find a way to go, ah! <laughs> or feel guilty, because now I feel like I, it make me feel like I don't love God because I didn't scream the loudest. Y'all with these cliches got to stop this mess, hello walls. Okay, so now I got beat up by him. And the praise uh, worshiper, the dancer, she got camel toes in her breasts and, and all that stuff. And now I got to turn my head, put my head down, okay? That's number two. <clears throat> and then came time for the offering. You made me feel bad because I didn't have my 10% this week. Matter of fact, I can't afford to give a tithe. So now you make me feel bad. I'm going to hell. I'm cursed with a curse even though I'm making $80,000 on my job. But I bought this $400,000 house and I got two kids in college. So it really kind of offsets a little bit here, you know that. But I'm being cursed with curse. Okay, now... That's three reasons why I ain't coming to your church. 
Okay, number four, I was in the pastor's office last week, and I was telling him, I'm going through some stuff. You know, I cheated on my wife. And I just, please, help me out with this. I want to be delivered from this. You got to have no problem, son. Let's pray with you. Let's talk with this, talk this out. And then I come to church Sunday, and that man who I put my confidence and trust in, he's telling my business over the pulpit. They know it's me. They saw my, paper, my face in the paper. They know who he's talking about. I told him this in utmost confidence, so I can't come to y'all church. Because the pastor is telling my business. Then I get there at 11 o'clock thinking, okay, I got a good seat. I'm on time. Good. We're going to be here for about 1230. We're good to go. I'm out of here. And it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon because everybody wants to prophesy. Everybody wants to speak in some tongue. Pastor, I got a word. Or oh, what's the word? The word already went forth. Can you, can you phone call the word in? Can you text the word in? Can you do a Facebook Live in the word? I've been here for three hours. How are you going to keep me captive? Okay, I can't leave because if I get up and walk out, you can say, hey, brother, stop. The Lord ain't through with you. Now you got to put me up on the front. Now everybody's standing around me, and this is what you're going to do. You're going to pour the oil on mine. You're going to you're gonna embarrass me, and then you're going to push me on the ground because you know I ain't going to fall out. I don't fall out for y'all. I just don't do it. I'm just sorry, y'all. I ain't that emotional, okay? I ain't falling. <sighs> you can blow all you want to, okay? You can punch me in the chest. Bro, man, ain't falling, okay? You got to get one of them, them hardcore fat deacons come over here and push me on the ground. Because y'all go back with me like this, I'm going to keep pushing forward. I'm like, no, nah, brother, I ain't going down. You going down. I ain't going down because ain't nothing in the scripture tell me I got to go down because you try to, you blowing and pushing me. Brother, I ain't going down. Why are you going to embarrass me like that? Now, I'm I'm in, I'm trying to court this woman over here. and the, You know, she always see the dapper dad in me. I'm always standing upright. I ain't falling for nobody. And that chick right over there in there, uh, I like her, but she gonna push me on the ground in front of her? I ain't going down on y'all. Mm -mm. Y'all do y'all put this thing, this carpet over me. Why I need the carpet for? I got pants on. What you putting carpet on me for? Okay, I don't get it. All right, I ain't falling. So now I'm embarrassed. All right, so that's five reasons why I ain't coming to y'all's churches. All right, now you hold too long, and then you embarrass me when I'm trying to get out of here. And there's the usher you put on the back door because you told me, the brother, don't let nobody out of here because he got an offering that I got to take his last dollar. Now the, 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 they locked the door. Now I got to call the fire department. Uh, yeah, yeah, can I get the fire department on the phone? Yeah, who is this? Well, this is me. I'm in the church. Black folks keeping me hostage, and I don't, I don't understand why ain't nobody called 911 yet because uh, they want my last dollar. And this fool here at the door right here, he won't let me out. What's, what's that all about? Five problems won't come because they figure, well, you can leave when you want to. Okay? And then last but not least, here come the dismissal. And then you tell me I can't, dis I can't leave there because you didn't speak over my life with dismissal prayer. Who, where, where are y'all getting this stuff from? What happened to all the other people who left early because they just had to go? Are they in trouble now because you didn't speak a dismissal prayer over them? Huh? Huh? Why does why do y'all do this? Where? So that means to tell me I can't be blessed unless you speak a dismissal prayer over me. Hmm? Who did God give you all that power over me? So now all week long, because I left early, uh, something gonna happen to me. I'm about to be in trouble. My son, my, my life's gonna get shut off. I literally heard this come out of y'all's mouth that my life's gonna get shut off. My I'm gonna get a flat tire. Um, let's see, I'm gonna have a car accident. Somebody in my house gonna get sick, okay? Like, all this stuff because I didn't do what y'all told me to do in church. I lift my hands to this foolishness and say, y'all gotta stop this. That's why ain't nobody coming to y'all's churches. They cleared out the old, the old. On. These millennials like this old fashioned southern bumpkin. I'm not sitting in with this mess. No. So they changed the music. And then y'all couldn't put up with it. And so they, they left. They went over to the new church that's popping up around your cities and towns. They're just flowing in there by the leaps and bounds. And what they're doing is they're borrowing music from CCM, the styles of CCM. That's why now the, our African American brothers and sisters are singing songs from the whites had it a long time. White folk had that music, uh, praise and worship, for a long time. We abandoned our own music. We have abandoned our identity. We don't know our sound anymore. We don't go to the, when you go, I'm not telling y'all this, okay, I keep telling y'all. You don't have to go to the, to the jazz clubs and the blues clubs. I go there 
to check out stuff for y'all. So let me do it, okay? <laughs> okay. But if you walk into a jazz club and a blues club, it's Lily White. Y'all abandoned that. You go into uh, places where it used to be us. Nope, no more. You drive up and down. Uh, I, I, my radio station is in Bronzeview. You drive up and down there now. It used to be black businesses lined up and down there. Every other, every block there was a black. No, they closing the doors. Y'all stopped visiting these places. I went to one of the greatest restaurants. I think it was called Blue Blue Forty Seven. I think it was on Forty Seven from King Drive. It was it was probably. Black or white, it was one of the greatest uh, restaurant experiences that I had ever had. This was in 2006, I think it was. 2006, 2007. I went to my neighborhood, Bronzeville. Blue 47, I think it's called. 47 King Drive. I walked in there, and it was immaculate. It was so clean, you could eat off the floor. And the, the menu was just amazing. And of course, the food, you know, it was a little costly for that area. I didn't care if it cost a hundred bucks. I didn't care. It was in my neighborhood and the waiters and the waitresses, they had their uniforms and they had the, the towel there and they were so cordial and they had the, what the, what's the person at the, who meets you there? The con, What they call the person who meets you at the, at the front of that? And he's the one that takes you to, uh, he's not the waiter, but he's the, he's the, whatever you call him. <clears throat> okay. And they had one of those. And, and it was so immaculate in that place. And the food was extraordinary. I said, oh my God, this is in my neighborhood. Never knew that. Okay, paid the bill, paid a big tip. I was like, yeah, I'm tipping. <clears throat> and I went home, and before he knew it, caught fire. Somebody burned the thing down. I said, oh my God, what's wrong with me? Okay, what's wrong with our people? Uh, and so, I, there, we, there we go again. So we have abandoned, we have abandoned, not the greeter, Charlie Harris. He's not, his name is not a greeter, even though he is a greeter. He has a name. What is his name? Okay. He is the, he is, y'all help me, not the host, Flower Bug. He's not a host. He has a name. Thank you, Con concierge, Demetri Pitts. He's a, I know y'all's, y'all's, um, um, y'all's uh, comments are coming in delayed. So if it seems like I don't see it, it's because they don't come in until a while. Uh, uh Maitre D, thank you. Yes. He's a he's a concierge or and the Maitre D. It, well it's really the Maitre D first. I think the concierge, isn't that like hospital? Isn't that like the em emergency room that con uh, no that's try that's try <laughs> I think that's triage or something like that. I don't, I'm getting it all mixed up. Okay. Yeah one is a hotel and one is the restaurant. So is it is it the concierge or is it the maitre d'? Help me out, uh, Abronia. <coughs> maitre d'. <coughs> okay. They burnt the place down. Regardless of who he is, they burnt it down. So the maitre <laughs> lost his d. He gone. <coughs> <coughs> Dr. Albert says that's the hotel. Mm. It could be both depending on where you are, Demetri Pitt says. Uh, po potentate. Okay, Ron Mill. Potentate. That sounds like more of a governmental office there. Okay, so y'all have abandoned the music. You've abandoned your culture. You have abandoned your food. So now, if you ask the average African-American what they like to eat, you know what they will say? I like Chinese. I like Italian. I like Mexican. I like Puerto Rican. I like Greek. And then lastly, you'll say I like soul food. Mm -hmm. You say, what kind of music do you like to listen to? Okay. If you're a Christian, you say, I love CCM. If you, if you go into their car, if you listen to their iPods, iPads, whatever music, wherever they store their music, you will hear CCM. The praise and worship was filled, filled with contemporary Christian music, CCM. Y'all say, what's CCM? That's usually uh, relegated to the whites or it's pop music from usually uh, the, the music you hear on your pop radio. Not black, but white. <clears throat> We've abandoned that all, all of that. Our clothing, we've abandoned it. And many of you African-American women, you are bleaching your skin. I see you guys on Facebook. I see you changing your full profile picture, and I don't recognize you. You're not black no more. You have the Michael Jackson Vilago diseases all of a sudden because y'all are, are bleaching your faces. Okay? You look white. So you've abandoned your facial. You, you, abandoned, you abandoned your face, your color. 
the, the pigment, the, the natural color that God gives you from dirt. You abandoned the dirt. <laughs> okay? I done lost count. Is that number five or six? And then number seven, you've abandoned your hair. Y'all are pressing your, uh, your buying hair now. Okay, it used to be the pressing, the, the, the ironing and all that stuff. And I know that's bad for your hair. So some of that needed to be abandoned. But, but now what you've done is you abandoned the natural look. And you're putting stuff in your hair where now you don't look like what y'all looked like back in the day. You look more like your white brothers and sisters. Some of y'all want to look like Indians. Uh, some of you want to look like uh, they, some of you are in love with the Hispanics. So you try to make your hair look like that. F flowing, wavy stuff that you see in some of the movies that we have and some of the soap operas and what have you. You want to look white. So you abandon your skin color. You abandon your hair. You're buying uh, extensions and you're buying... Uh, um, uh, uh, tractions, whatever y'all call that stuff, and you're just buying stuff. So then you abandon your eyes. God made you with brown and black eyes. He made you, uh, um, if some of you, of course, have some, some other color in there, but what you've done is you decide you know you don't need contacts. You know you don't wear glasses. But you want to look like other people, so what you what did you do? You went down there and you bought you some some contact or some color lenses to put in your eyes because you don't want to look like you. What's 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 wrong with us? We've abandoned our eyes. That's right, Alvin. He said this natural stuff ain't working for everybody. <laughs> yes, I shifted this subject. I shifted it. I have to shift it because I'm here and I probably never see y'all again. Okay? So, you abandon your face, you abandon your hair, you abandon your eyes, and then y'all abandoning your nose. I got a fat, big nose right here. Better to smell you with, my dear. Okay? <clears throat> I got a big nose here, and I was so embarrassed with this nose all my youth. Okay? I was, a, I was, a, I just, they said, you got a big nose. You got a big hair, you got a big nose. And I was, I just hated to take pictures. Oh, I couldn't see, I just couldn't stand to see myself. And they had big nose, big nose, big nose. And I said, man, I don't, I, I God, I wish you could do something for me. And and then I start seeing the uh, pictures on TV about what uh, I would see black women lusting after these 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 heartthrobs, these men. Many of these men are hung, um, Many of these men are um, they're married. So you women putting putting all these pictures on Facebook of these men, y'all saying they're heartthrobs. They married. Y'all lusting after married men. What's wrong with you, black women? Why are y'all lusting after uh, married black men? Huh? That's because they're in Hollywood. Leave Denzel alone. We ain't jealous of Denzel, but the man is married. Why y'all lusting after a married man? Anyway, so I used to, I used to say, God, do something with this. And I had, the devil told me to go down there and get surgery and get a nose reduction. Yes! I'm saying, I was getting ready to do something stupid like that. Getting ready to abandon what God has given me, okay? So now y'all getting these, these, these uh, type of lifts and and shapes and reconstruction so that you can look like them. You've abandoned everything that God has given you. Yes, you have. Okay? So now, when a person look at you, they don't, they can't find your beginnings. They don't know where your beginnings are. They don't know it. Are you black? Yeah. Yeah, I'm black. No, you ain't black. Why are you going to tell me I ain't black? Because that ain't your nose, that ain't your skin, that ain't your eyes, that ain't your hair. Why are you eating Hispanic food? Why are you listening to uh, CCM? Okay? Uh, you ain't, did you abandon everything? So now you are strange. You're a stranger in your own territory. And Hispanics are the same from the time they were discovered <laughs> until now. They've always been, they never intermingle with the other cultures that you, I, on Sunday, it took me two hours to get home, and it's usually a 20-minute trip. You know why? Because I made a mistake and made a left turn in a Hispanic neighborhood. And every time I go up in there, they celebrating, guess who? They celebrating themselves. Pilsen, y'all know the area. Humble Park. Y'all know the area. Go up and down uh, the south side on Pulaski Avenue and Western Avenue. Y'all know the area. They always celebrating themselves, even though it ain't a holiday for them. And sometimes I say to myself, 
why y'all keep celebrating Puerto Rico in New in Mexico over here? Take your behind back. <laughs> it's taking me two hours to get home, and you 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 whack, waving the Mexican flag in America, and I'm trying to get home. Go back to Mexico and wave that flag. Okay, I didn't say that loud, but I did. But I had the windows rolled up because I didn't want I didn't want nobody cutting me. Okay. Am I being racist today? With so they do this every weekend. All their businesses are open on on the weekend on Sunday. Their businesses stay open, and they and and people are in the street. They got the carts, and they they're selling all of the, all of the things that remind them of their people. But then when I drove up and down Roseland Avenue, Michigan Avenue, business after business after business closed down. The shutters are down. Ain't nobody in there. Ain't nobody to be found. The only thing open is a currency exchange, a liquor store. What else? Uh, and those people who come over here with the dots on their heads. They got their stores open. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Habib, his store is always open. Okay? Our stores, closed. The Hispanics, on the, on the Sunday, wide open. All over the place. We have abandoned our own culture. The Asians go up and down Chinatown, stuff open, and they serve their own food. Okay? That's what they serve. They don't they don't serve. Now some of them are trying to put some soul food in there because they don't they know y'all shopping there, but most real Asian stores, they don't serve Hispanic food. They don't serve Italian. They don't serve Greek. They serve Chinese food, period. They might put a fry in there because y'all keep walking up in there. Yeah. And one of their dishes, we think it's from them, but it's not from there. It's from either America or another country. What's that What's that Chinese dish that's not even theirs? Uh, ch chow mein. I don't think chow mein is not even Chinese. It's not even them. That's somebody else. So some of the stores don't sell don't sell ch ch chow mein because they know it ain't theirs. <laughs> That's right, Reginald McDonald. Liquor stores open on Sunday in in Shy. No wonder I, I want to move back there. <laughs> ah, Reginald. Mm -hmm. Christian culture is closed business on Sunday. Yep, Cheryl Dunlap. Yep, the Christian culture is closed uh, business. But watch this, my Hispanic friends, are Christian. They celebrate uh, uh, Christ or uh, Guadalupe <laughs> or Jesus. They got all kind of names for them. But many of my Hispanic friends are Christian, and their shops are wide open. Okay, and the black businesses they say they they close them because they want to. Uh, now watch this. I want you. I want you to hear the hypocrisy of the African-American church. They say, we're not going to do anything on the Sabbath because we're not supposed to. But guess where they go after service is over? You know where they go? Mm -hmm. They go to a soul food restaurant. They go to Sabrina's right up here. That's African-American. That's my friend. <clears throat> they, go to, they go to this other soul food restaurant. Those places are open. Those are black Christians. Matter of fact, Sabrina is owned by a pastor and first lady. So the hypocrisy is we should we should have the businesses. We we don't we don't open our business because it's the Sabbath, but we're gonna go to your business and help you sin by supporting your business and staying open on the Sunday on the Sabbath. You see the hypocrisy? It just makes me sick. <clears throat> and then you we talk about okay, but anyway. And lastly but not least, because I've been on here for an hour and 20 minutes, the people are tired of seeing overweight, obese people worshiping in our churches. That's over us. And this is where it gets sensitive. And I'm trying not to offend anybody. But the people are seeing very overweight people uh, <clears throat> ministering over us. And um, it's hard for them to hear messages about um, taking care of yourselves. Yeah, lastly. Taking care of your, <laughs> taking care of uh, your mind, taking care of your spirit, man, uh, taking care of your financial 
situations in uh, in your life, and um, but then the, the term gluttony rarely ever pop up in our churches ever. You notice that you don't hear about gluttony. <laughs> I would say, watch it, sucker. Yeah, fat people are over our services. I was watching the Stella Awards, and everybody up there was fat. Everybody who sang was fat. Everybody who announced an award to somebody was fat. They were overweight. And so the world looks at the black church and say, only fat people know how to sing. Only fat people are, are over our churches. Yes. So uh, people come in there and they see a fat person sitting in a chair because he cannot stand up. He's too overweight. So he can't preach standing up. He's got to sit in a chair. And they've got, the, they got special we- chairs with wheels on them now. All right, where he has to sit down and they have to wheel him around because he's too fat to stand up and preach. And I'm not talking about people who have medical problems. I'm not talking about those. That's why I said I got to be sensitive because everybody who who eat are not fat because they so called because they eat because there are people who are fat who eat less than myself. <clears throat> but they look at food and go they they swell up. All right. But then I'm talking about the ones who are glut, who know that they are overweight because they eat. But they are 400 pounds and they're standing with the microphone. <sighs> Turn the Bible to <sighs> They can't even breathe. And I, and I don't make fun of this. I'm just trying to tell y'all that this is, this is, should not be named among us. And the people are coming here and they sit in the audience like, oh my God, this fat man is trying to tell me how to be healthy. In the Lord, and he can't even stand up. Dude, you better leave them alone before you. <laughs> Alvin! I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm, I'm going I'm to get off of that one because now I'm upsetting y'all, so I'm going to stop. All right? So, this is the reason why the people are not coming to church, your churches. I gave you about 10 of them. Rewind this tape and um, share it with your friends and try to figure out why. Okay? <laughs> I think the biggest thing that comes out is that you guys, you, you, you have not progressed. Your church has not progressed. You're still in the old days. You always tell me, they always tell the people, I remember when, when we used to do this. I remember when we used to do that. Then you sing the song that says, take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. that song and I love the whole aspect of what Andre was saying take me back to the place where I first believed not take me back to a culture to a church culture but t- culture but take me back to the place where I first saw you that's why the Bible says go back and do your first works all over again uh, he says return to your first love that's what that song is all about but what you've done is you you take that song and manipulate and put witchcraft in there to make people go back to your father's Oldsmobile and that's not the way the mentality are today, people have progressed now. They're not as patient now. So now you don't change the message, you don't compromise the gospel, but you got to do some things now to cause people to say, mm, you know what? Now you're with me here. Uh, Donald Trump is using this motto on his hat that says, uh, let's make America great again. But what he's really saying to his cohorts, okay, and his, um, his deplorables that's in that bucket that, uh, what's the name, put them in, the deplorables, what he's really saying on that hat make America great again is take America back to the time when y'all were slaves. No, maybe not go back that far. He's really saying take America back to Jim Crow. There it is. Take America back to a place where niggas when a white man spoke a nigga said yes sir. Yeah, make America white again. That's what he's saying. So that song, Take Me Back some of y'all used it to take people back to to that place where Sister Bobo, with the wig on, is talking about a hand growing out one time in 40 years. That's the only miracle that they saw. <laughs> okay. No. So, what the church have done, many of my white brothers and sisters, what they did this was they got rid of uh, the cross in the church. They got rid of the pulpit. They got rid of that, that, that throne. Pastors love that throne, that throne that sits in the pulpit. That's what I'm calling it, the throne, right? 
He looks like a king. He sits there and he rules over his subjects well. And he's got his armor bearer on the left. His adjutant is on the right. And he's sitting there in that chair. They, they're making these chairs now. They look like thrones because they're real tall. And some of them got crowns on them. And the pastor sit in that chair in his throne. And he looks over his people. Yeah. And he like uh, Nebuchadnezzar say, look what I've done. <laughs> look at the work I've done. Yeah. So the, so the purpose who ain't been to church in a while or never been, he walk in there and he see the throne, the guy in the big chair. And he says, oh my God, what is this? Yeah. So what happened, so now the progressed church, they threw the that, that chair out of the pulpit. They got rid of it. And the pastors are now sitting with the members. They're sitting among the people. I went to South Dakota. That's what, I've never seen that before, before until I moved to South Dakota. And I didn't know where the pastor was. I couldn't spot him nowhere. I'm looking around. <clears throat> I didn't see no thrones in the in the pulpit. I said, well, who the pastor here? He ain't say. And they said, he's, he's over there. I said, that's the pastor? Yeah. He didn't have his son. There was no tie. There was no collar. There was no rope. He had on a pair of blue jeans, some gym shoes, and a shirt that said, I think it might have said Coca-Cola on it. I can't even remember. Okay, he would look shabby. Looked like he ain't shaving in a while. Yeah. And he was sitting over there among the members. <clears throat> they knew him, but I didn't. And I said, that's the pastor? They said, yeah. And when he got up, he proved to me that he was the pastor because he had preached one of the best messages that I had heard in 10 years prior. And I says, oh, I get it now. And the place was full because what they did was they tried to they throw out the tradition that Jesus was trying to tell the Pharisees, your tradition is what's killing you. You're so caught up in that, but here I am. You see, search the scriptures to see if you can find eternal life, is what Christ said. But he said, when you search it, you find in me. I'm right here among you, and you still reject me. Notice when Jesus came, he didn't look like he's supposed to. He did. That's why the disciples were upset. That's why Peter was upset, because Jesus didn't look like a savior. He didn't look like a son of God. He looked like everybody else. He wore sandals and a robe. Well, what the, the clothing of that day, whatever the skirt, well, whatever the men wore, he looked like everybody else. And when he went out in the streets, to, it says they said that the, the prostitutes and the harlots and the publicans and, and all the poor people, and the, they followed Christ. But if Christ had put on a suit of that day that looked like he looked like he was, they wouldn't have followed him. And then he says, I got to go and die. And then and, and Peter, Peter almost, I think he cussed him out. Peter said, Jesus, you boop, boop, you ain't no, you not. And then, then Jesus said, get behind me, devil. How dare you? Tell me, I, I, I'm dying for you, man. So today, that's why I don't wear my collar that much. Even on first Sunday when it come down for communion Sundays, I don't even wear my collar. I, I, I built the collar. The collar didn't make me, okay? I worked hard for the collar. I didn't beg for it. They gave it to me because they thought I was worthy to have it. So they gave me a rope, a collar. I don't like wearing it. I almost hate wearing it. I don't like it. I want to fit in with the people. They know I'm an elder. I don't have to prove nothing to them. I don't like walking in with everybody. Holy, holy, holy. I just feel out of, sometimes I feel out of place. I don't know. Let me sit with the so-called commoners. Let me be with them. Those are the people I see all week long. Those are the ones that I cherish my time with. Those are the ones who I give to them and they give to me all week long through social media, Facebook Live, YouTube, and my show. Them the ones. Those are my members. I'm the pastor of social media. Sundays when I see y'all, I ain't seen y'all, heard from y'all all week. No phone call, no nothing. Y'all even watch my shows. Then y'all be like, I heard you got a radio show. I've had a radio show for years. You didn't know that? That's my whole point. Because you close minded on Sunday. You leave there and nobody in the world know you. That's why the Bible says he that desires the office of a bishop desires a good thing. And then it says they're supposed to know you not only within the body but outside. So the people don't know y'all outside. They don't recognize you. They recognize me. 
in my neighborhood, they know me. They know who I am, my name. They know what I do. Trust me, because I talk to them. They know. And I go to their, their, if it's not compromising who I am, I go to their events. Sometimes to some of their parties, depending on what kind of party it is. They know me. Because I desire the office of a bishop. Not the bishop what y'all think today. A bishop is pretty much a pastor, an elder. It's pretty much what it is, okay? So, I don't wear that stuff. Uh, who was that that said, he said he, he's a Baptist church. He comes from Moody Bible Institute. He says he's a, oh, I forgot his name. I don't know if uh, Nally's here. What's his name? My favorite preacher who comes on. But he says, we're a Baptist church. He says, when you walk in there, you know we're a Baptist church. Matter of fact, the door, it says uh, Pihokee Baptist Church. He says, y'all see it. He said, but when I'm sitting among the people out there in the streets, among some times I go to these arenas or what have you, and they ask me, uh, what's your denomination? The pastor said, I never tell them I'm Baptist. He says, because if I tell them I'm Baptist, it tells the people where I have stopped. I said, oh, my God. Message? That's the message. I don't tell people I'm from the Church of God in cash. Who did I say that? Alvin and Alvin and mess me up. I don't tell them I'm from the Church of God in Christ. I don't tell them unless the conversation comes up when they just gotta know. I do not tell them. Other than that, I say I'm a son of God. I'm a child of the King. I don't tell them I'm even a Christian. I hate using that word because everybody in a Christian. You're watching it. Matter of fact, there's a show on right now. Uh, what is this? The Black Music Honors or something is on right now on WGN Channel 9. Okay? And uh, some guy will get an award for a song that says, uh, What up, B? You know, this my hoe. This my nigga. We ride or die and all this stuff. Okay? That's his song. He just got get a Grammy for that. He, he get up on the stage and he grabbed the mic. He said, I want to thank all my hoes out there. For supporting my records. But he said, but I first want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for helping me write this song, Bump Your Mama All Night Long with Her Booty Out. Okay? I'm like myself. And the world sees that and says, yep, there's a Christian. There it is. There is the Christian. So I snatched the collars and stuff off. It means nothing to me. I made it. It didn't make me. I made it. So... I don't wear it. I wear it when I want to feel like it. And if the bishops say, y'all wear your class A or wear your class B. So I wear it out of obedience because I'm a part of an organization. You can say what y'all will. If I'm, 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 I'm going to join an organization, then you abide by the rules and regulations of that organization. Okay? But my bishop don't get upset with me when I don't wear my collar. He don't. That's the agreement we have. All right? Others, they wear it. And sometimes they wear it. It empowers them. Matter of fact, I notice I walk different. When I put my collar on, I start... That's why I stopped wearing it. That's when I stopped wearing it. Because I would put my collar on and my rope in there. Okay, I got my class B on. And I'm walking. And I noticed that I walk different. I walk up. And I looked at myself. I said, oh, my God. I'm like a little pride Clydesdale. Y'all see how those Clydesdales walk? With the, you know, they're very beautiful. But they look so proud when they, when they, when they walk. Okay. They got their white fur legs, you know. And I'm walking with these men of honor and prestige, okay? These holy men of valor. And I'm walking, and, I'm, and I find myself being high and lifted up, and I caught myself. I said, ooh, this don't feel right. And I snatched that thing off me. I said, nah, no way. I'm not going to be caught up with that mess. Mm -mm, no. I'm just going to. So convocation went on. They told everybody to wear their class A. Nope, didn't. I went to the convocation. I was among the bishops and the elders and those on the general board of the Church of God in Christ. And I walked in there with my just, and uh, I didn't have my class A on. I lowered my class as low as I can. And the, the one, the new elders, the young men who just got their ordination. I've been in this game a long time. But these new boys came up to me and said, where's your class A? I said, come here, little boy. Let me, let me tell you something. You look nice in your white and your your garb, okay? All this stuff makes you look holy, don't it? Yeah. I said, I'm a 50-year-old man. You just turned 21. You just got ordained. You're now an elder now, right? Yes. 
I said, if you start getting caught up in that clothes and them calling you elder, that's when I'm going to tell the bishop to sit your butt down. I said, because when they made me an elder, before they did that, they told me to go back there in the bathroom and start scrubbing them toilets. He says, you could paint this wall. Okay, I felt like the, uh, the karate kid. Wax on, wax off. Paint the fence, okay? That's what I was doing. They were preparing me. They were trying to remind me that you've been elevated in office. The, the higher you go, the lower you go as it pertains to servitude. You're supposed to serve those people, not lord over them. All right? So when you find yourself being puffed up because you got these, these holy clothes on, that's when the Lord's going to snatch you. I said, so young man, them clothes don't mean nothing to God. You still a little boy, and you got a long way to go. So don't be asking me where my class A is, right? Because as soon as this service is over, they're going to still look at you like a little boy who just happened to be an elder. He said, oh, yes, sir. I said, I hope you remember this for the rest of your life. Now go march with these holy men of God because many of them men are in sin. <laughs> so go, shoe boy, shoe fly, don't bother me. That's right, serve your way up. So I'm not, I don't like, I don't get caught up in that. I went to church today. I just I got back to church before I did this, and this is my outfit right here. That's my outfit. I ain't got to put the clothes in the closet. You know, every time I go somewhere, now I wear it when I go to sometimes to the hospital because you have you have to have uniforms. I go when I'm dedicating a building, when I'm marrying someone, doing a marriage ceremony, uh, when I'm doing a burial service. I put the collar on because that's a uniform for that. If you call the police because somebody broke in your house and a guy show up with a white t-shirt on, you ain't letting him in, are you? You want to see a guy or a woman with blue on with that walkie-talkie but, but near her mouth and a gun on, on her side, right? That's the person you're going to let in the house, I'm sure. You could you go to the hospital, a triage, <laughs> okay, we said earlier, and they wheel you up in there and somebody standing over there. You don't want to see somebody like me standing over you like this. Because you're going to be saying, you going to take me to heaven? No, you want to see a guy or a woman with all white on, with, a, with his, her hands like this, clean, sterile. <laughs> okay, saying, I'm getting ready to heal you. It's, it's all about the uniform, okay, uh, when you're doing work like that. Outside of that, in God's eyes, the, that collar is plain clothes. You, you, you might as well be a work for the streets of sanitation. That's garbage. Uh, yeah, Andrew, what do you say? Call to serve, not to be served. Amen, amen. Y'all said a whole lot of stuff here. There is no way I'm going to read all of it online because this is one of the rare times where I just didn't, I didn't read any of your stuff while I was talking because I need to get my point out and I don't want y'all to take my point away. So tomorrow I'll go ahead and hit the play button and read what you guys said because what Facebook does is as the video is going, it replays y'all's comment at the time that I said what I said. Y'all know how it works. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will say a couple of these. You said, I, I love the pastors that are out among their flocks. Younger people cannot relate to these big chairs and all of that all that gold. <laughs> we are losing our youth, Deatrice said. Deatrice, I got a name right this time. Deatrice, I got it. That is so tri true. Pence, Demetra, I love you. Good night, Walter. You don't laugh. You don't what? You don't laugh me. Oh, you was laughing. <laughs> I was a fool today. I don't know what my problem was. Uh, uh, Demetra, I'm going to call you. Uh, no, you going to bed. All right, because I'm getting ready to shut this down, and I know it's your bedtime, so I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm going to call you. Um, I, I guess I'll wait till tomorrow since you're going to bed. But um, uh, the uh, the white churches are now, they, um, they took the, the, the steeple down, got rid of that. They got the chairs out of the churches. Um, they took Christ off of the wall. Y'all still got him up there for some reason. He should have been down. He ain't up there no more. Okay, uh, and then and then there's crosses. They took that down, and then what they did was um, they um, they brought in a more. I'm not saying I agree with this, okay, but I see where they're trying what they're trying to do. They brought in a more stage, more uh, venue, more nightclub, a more um, what they call them theater, more so. Uh, type of atmosphere. So they bring in the smoke and they have a rock band up there. And nobody wears suits. The pastor comes in with a blue jean and some some shirt. Sometimes he's got tattoos everywhere. Okay, that's the church. 
uh, that they have uh, ascribed to today. Uh, I I don't feel comfortable in that particular church, you know, because of, I come up in a different atmosphere. It's it's really about choice and preference. If that's their preference, and the, and the, if the Lord is moving in there, please don't judge that church. Please don't think because they're not having church like you that they're not saved. Please stop that. Please um, stop thinking that because they don't play a bluesy type sound that we have in our church. That's really what it is. We play ragtime, blues, and jazz in our church. That's how all, most of our music is. I'm not talking about this new millennium stuff. I'm talking about from the 60s, 70s, 80s. Our church was bluesy, jazzy uh, type songs. That's the way it was, okay? Um, so stop judging how they have their services. That's the way they do it, and you don't know who's saved among those people. When I moved to South Dakota, they ha- they were having a coffee house. That was their church. Sunday morning, prime time, it was in a coffee house. And they came in blue jeans and plain clothes, and they sipped coffee and donuts, and they sat ar- around tables, and there was a PowerPoint, and the, and the man would teach, and we would sip coffee and eat donuts and uh, just have a great time. That was their church. It was very uncomfortable for me. I didn't understand what that was all about, okay? I said to myself, this is crazy. But I was brainwashed to believe that if you didn't have a piano, a Hammond organ, a guitar, and drums, and people dressed with suits, that y'all wasn't having church, and nobody never was saved. And I realized that the ones who were sipping coffee and watching PowerPoint were the ones who were helping me the most and not the ones from when I would go up the street to that church that looked like the churches in Chicago who, who was dressed the way I was and shouting up and down the aisles and speaking in tongues and foaming at the mouth. Those are the ones who offended me. Those are the ones when I was down and out would not help me. They would not call me. They wouldn't come to the hospital to visit me. They just wouldn't check on me. It was those those people who were at the coffee house and sipping their coffee and their teas and eating donuts and watching the PowerPoint guy. Those are the ones that were doing the work. Those are the ones I kept seeing pop up at the hospital. Those are the ones who, when the chips were down, they were giving me money, just saying that you don't owe me nothing. The Lord told me to pay for your your light bill. Those were the ones. So we're looking uh, through the eyes of our own scopes, thinking that they because they don't look like us, they ain't saved, and God's going to judge you for that. Stop it. My last thing that I'm going to say is that I was at a funeral, and I've told this story before, where um, I was at this funeral at a church, a regular church with the steeple, I dressed up, I had my suit on because I was getting ready to be the, play the music. It was an unsaved person in that casket. And, uh, and of course, all of the thugs and the gangbangers and all of the people were coming in and marching around, uh, viewing the body. And I'm sitting among the ushers and the nurses there at the church. And they kept saying, look at that woman. Look at that hussy right there. Look at her. Oh, this is all just sin all around us. And I'm sitting there and saying, hey, man, ooh, this is horrible. I'm sitting among these women. Okay, being a part of the amen corner because of all these people walking around because they look like they were sinners, all right? You could smell the smoke. And the Holy Spirit told me, get up, get up, walk out, okay? The service had not started. And I got up and walked down that aisle, walked to the door. And the front door had glass, there's two glass doors where you go in and out of that church. And I'm standing here on the inside of the church and outside of those doors were two people. There was a man and a woman. The woman, the man had a cigarette in his mouth. The woman, she, I think she had a cigarette too, and she had a, her skirt was her skirt was so short that it left nothing to your imagination. Okay, um, and uh, he was cussing, and she was standing there saying something derogatory. I don't know what it was. It was just it was just unseemly, and I'm standing there looking at them, judging them in my mind. And the Lord spoke to me. Now this is when y'all know that God speaks to you. Okay. You don't know how he talks to me, and I don't know how he speaks to you. Some of y'all, get to, he, he speaks to you in dreams, and, but he always speaks to me in visions. I dream every night, every single night I dream, but most of them are not uh, God speaking to me that something that I should reveal openly. He speaks to me in visions. For some reason, that's how he deals with me. And there he was talking to me, and he said to me, that suit you have on does not impress me whatsoever. Okay, and I'm using natural language here. This is my interpretation of what he was saying to me. He says, I'm not impressed by your suit. Your suit means nothing to me. He says, you stink in my eyes. And at the time I was, I was stinky. Okay, I'm not talking about physically, because I'm always a clean man. Okay, He said, you stink. He said, those people outside that you're getting ready to judge, who you was in that church with those ushers and nurses judging those people, he says, I love them. He said, those are, those are the people that I need you to go out for. 
I called you into ministry for those people right there. The very ones that you you getting ready to throw in hell. The very ones who make who who you who got you getting ready to vomit because you what you smell. Them the ones that I love and I that I want. You you stink. And I started tearing up right there at the door, just tearing up. And I don't show my emotion to nobody. And I started tearing up right there. I said, oh, my God. And then he brought me to, he reminded me of a scripture where Jesus was talking to, was it the disciples or the Pharisees or the Sadducees? I can't remember. And he says that the harlot and the publican will get to heaven before you. That's what Jesus Christ said. He said the whole will get to heaven before you. You, the ones who proclaim it, that that's where you're going. He said, no, because these people out here, why do you think that that's going to be the end of their state? Because that's the their present state, don't mean that's going to be the end of their state. And the end of their state should be uh, the uh, you should be responsible or have some type of effect on the end of their state because I sent you to witness to them. So they're going to get to heaven before you, even if you're the ones that witness to them, they get saved, they go to heaven, you're going to go to hell with your three piece too, though. I was convicted. And right away, I went back in that church. I did not sit with the ushers and the nurses. I went over there to, to the organ. I sat over there until church started. And I had a whole nother look on life. A whole nother leaf on life. I, was, I said to myself, never again will I judge the sinner the way I do. Because who's to say that uh, tomorrow, that same sinner, tonight will re receive a revelation. He will get saved. And tomorrow morning, Jesus is going to come and I'm going to go to hell. And the sinner is going to be in, in uh, he going to be in heaven. Because when you look in the book of Revelation, that's what it says. Is he, he saw all nations, races, all type of culture of people. He says, those are the ones that's going to, he says, I saw them standing before the throne on, in, in heaven. All these people who y'all threw out the book of Revelation is saying that all these people are going to make it. They've been converted. Hallelujah today. All right. Yes, sir, Chosen. You're so welcome. Conviction is good. It keeps us in line. It does. So now you see why I don't have to wear all the clergy stuff because a lot of my clergy brothers and sisters, they're in deep sin and they just haven't been exposed yet. <laughs> and I know what, what's going on. I got some, some messages now I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with some stuff now with pastors and some bishops right now who the church is getting ready to snatch their credentials, getting ready to defrock them because they're in sin, sin, sin. I'm not talking about somebody sleeping with this one woman. I ain't talking about that. I ain't, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about multiple situations where it's not going to be pretty. But they walk out there every Sunday with their holy garb on. And um, they're getting ready to get snatched, and I, I and I know that they know, and I and they know that I know, and um, but yet they preach the gospel on Sunday mornings to the sinner, and I say to myself, "Do you realize what you do? <laughs> that man that you tell him going to hell, he may make it, and you may not. Right now, you're in a state of going to hell." <laughs> All right. All right, I've been on here too long. I'm going to return to CB on, pop some popcorn, and enjoy a quiet evening at home with me and my dog, Iris. The Black Music Honors are on. came on 10 o'clock, and I'm going to rewind it and see if uh, I can catch uh, the rest of it. All right, y'all. Thank you, Aaron Phillips. Thank you, Melissa Green. Thank you, uh, Demetria Pitt. She's gone. Thank you, Aura Aura. Love the name. Thank you, Melissa Green. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, who else? Abronia? I'm surprised you stayed here. Thank you, Deborah House. Praise God for you. Um, Flower Bug, hey, Tamara, thank you. Alvin Carter, he's probably gone. He don't hang around that much. He's a busy man. And um, uh, Cheryl Dunlap, God bless you, Reginald. Bless you. And the rest of you who came in a little earlier, God bless you and thank you for this. Uh, go ahead and share this with some people if you can. Hit the share button. Eve Cook, I see you up there. I see you up there. Hey, Eve Cook, I love you, girl. Dr. Albert um, Anderson, bless you. Uh, Charlie Harris, blessings to you. I speak blessings over you guys tonight. Uh, uh, Sharon McDavid, hey, that's the, that's the my heart right there. I speak blessings over you, Tamara. I think I said your name. I speak blessings over you, 
okay, um, that you tomorrow when you guys wake up, the only way to service that you remember is some of the stuff I said, maybe make a change in some of the things that you're doing. Darius uh, Witherspoon, bless you. Uh, I see you. Um, Terry Sanders. Now, which Terry Sanders? I got to be careful because, you know, we got a couple of Terry Sanders. One is, a, one is a preacher. One ain't no preacher. One detest preachers. <laughs> uh, Jay Humphrey, blessings to you. So that's why I got to be careful who I bless. Because if you're an atheist, I can't bless you. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, Justin Cram, Cram, blessings to you. Terrell Edwards, God bless you. An amazing anointing man of God. Can preach and sing and play drums like a crazy man. Xavier Treadwell, Treadwell, blessings to you. I speak blessings to you, David Brock, and another anointed minstrel of God. I speak blessings over your life tonight. I hope you all sleep well. My mother, Evelyn Jones, sleep well. My mom, y'all keep praying for her as the Lord get her out of that wheelchair. Uh, the brother Terrence, Elder Terrence Johnson, blessings to you from New Mexico. Uh, love you, brother Emilia. Uh, she's, well, today is Saturday, so she had her church, church service. <laughs> Blessings to you. David Gill, that's Buddy Gill's brother. Blessings to you, Chris Bates, an anointed man who knows how, and he running. Chris Bates running. Now, I'll say that over over the, over this, I can say that. He running, okay? But when he stopped running, I'm a, a matter of fact, I'm going to put my holy leg out there so he can trip and fall and fall into the arms of Jesus Christ. Chris Bates is in, uh, my uh, federal communication commission man. <laughs> <laughs> in radio many 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 years uh and uh i love him dearly um juanita phillips blessings to you i speak blessings over your life betsy ortiz i speak blessings over you as well um karen williams i speak blessings over you pastor karen williams who will be installed uh this month next week actually as pastor of that church over there she's doing a great work and i love her dearly um who else here um I think I got everybody here. I'm at the very top of this thing. Just wanted to speak blessings over all of you. Vanessa Kennedy, uh, Carla Thomas, I speak blessings over you. The Lord has blessed you to do a work out here in the street. You're not no pastor, no preacher, elder, evangelist, missionary, none of that. But you're doing the work without the clothes, the collars, and the license. You're doing the work that others who have been licensed to do, they ain't doing it. You're doing it. And that's why God keep, continues to bless you. And I'm going to stay around that blessing. Mm -hmm. Maurice E. Gregory, pastor, elder, I love you, man. Blessings over you. Clarence Edward Cobbs, uh, what happened to the real piano players? I'm not talking about the keyboard players. I miss that real piano sound at church. Amen, Clarence. You're so right. I speak blessings over you. Timothy Mills, uh, blessing to you. Evangelist uh, Lucille Stewart, I speak blessing over your life. Abundant blessing. Kendrick Scales, the greatest sound man in the world. That man there, I speak blessing over you and Angela Bridges. Blessing, blessing to you. Uh, lady. I'm at the top, y'all. I'm finished. Lady Rochelle Dotson Matheny, blessings over you. She's doing a great work over there, Urban Broadcast Media. She is doing a cancer show, cancer, not just awareness, but action. Uh, and the Lord has blessed her, healed her of cancer. Uh, and uh, she's doing the work. She's out there getting the word out there to the people of God. So, Lady Rochelle, I love you. She has blessed me with uh, my goddaughter, my Leah. So, thank you. And Brody and Scott, last but not least, well, you're doing the best you know how, Brony. You know, <laughs> Brony you know, always blessed the men of God on Thursday nights during Bible study. So, we love her. Okay, and that's it. That's football Sunday for me. And, yeah, I understand. All right, everybody. Good night to you. Enjoy your Sunday service tomorrow. Be praying for me as I continue in this ministry. All right? Uh, a prophetic word was given to me tonight while I was at church. And um, all we can do is try the Spirit by the Word of God and see if it is of God. I believe it is of God because the man who gave it to me got a good track record. <laughs> so I'll tell you all about the prophecy as we get close. Love you guys.